This is Dr. Linda Snetzelar. Uh, I am Editor-in-Chief of the Journal of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics and also the Associate Provost of Outreach and Engagement at the University of Iowa and a professor in the Department of Epidemiology in the College of Public, Public Health at the University of Iowa. And I'm honored today to have with me on this particular podcast Dana K. Anderson, MD. He is the Scientific Program Manager um, in the Division of Digestive Diseases and Nutrition at NIDDK at the National Institutes of Health. And today we're going to be talking about type 3C diabetes and cancer. And um, Dr. Anderson, um, welcome to our podcast today. And my first question to you is, what can you tell me about um, exactly what occurs when uh, we look at the connection between cancer and diabetes from a physiologic point of view? Well, thank you, Dr. Snetzlar. It's a pleasure to be with you and to address this, uh, this issue. Longstanding diabetes increases the risk for many cancers, as you know, such as breast cancer, colon cancer, and liver cancer. It is a particularly important risk factor for pancreatic cancer, and it doubles the risk for the development of this disease. Now, the mechanisms of this increased risk are the focus of a lot of ongoing research and appear to be related to the action of increased levels of insulin that are circulating, as in type 2 diabetes, on the growth of precancerous changes in the pancreas, or as well as the effects of obesity on cancer development. In addition, we now know that pancreatic cancer is actually a cause of diabetes in at least 25% of pancreatic cancer patients. And this form of diabetes is different from type 2 diabetes. It's called pancreatogenic or type 3C diabetes. How is type 2 diabetes different from type 3 diabetes? And sort of to go along with that, how do you distinguish type 3 diabetes, type 3C diabetes? Well, type 3C diabetes can result from a number of different pancreatic diseases, including acute and chronic pancreatitis, cystic fibrosis, surgical resection of the pancreas, as well as pancreatic cancer. And based on a study of almost 2,000 patients with diabetes that were studied at an academic medical center in Germany, 8% of all the diabetics actually have type 3C diabetes, and 9% of the patients with type 3C diabetes have it as a consequence of pancreatic cancer. So diabetes is both a contributing cause to the development of pancreatic cancer, and it can also be caused by the cancer, and therefore is a harbinger or a biomarker for the presence of pancreatic cancer. And this dual causality, as the epidemiologist puts it, put it, causes a lot of confusion about the relationship of diabetes and pancreatic cancer. Now, the cause of type 3C diabetes and pancreatic cancer is very much open to investigation. The current theories are that the cancer or cancer-induced inflammatory cells interfere with the function of the insulin-producing beta cells and the PP cells in the islets, and this impairs insulin release and also impairs insulin action at the liver. Precise mechanisms of these processes are still very much in the investigational stage, but there are several possible candidates. We think that at least 25% of pancreatic cancer cases exhibit this form of type 3C diabetes, so we're actively exploring strategies to identify cancer-induced type 3C diabetes separately from the more common type 2 diabetes so as to detect pancreatic cancer at an earlier stage. Uh, 
can you tell us more about the differences in terms of type 1, type 2, and type 3C? So the differences between these three types of diabetes are shown on this slide. Type 2 diabetes is the most common and accounts for about 80% of all diabetic subjects. The major characteristics of type 2 diabetes are elevated levels of insulin and decreased insulin sensitivity. In type 3C diabetes, insulin levels are low, along with all of the islet hormones. And although peripheral insulin sensitivity is increased due to the low insulin levels, hepatic sensitivity to insulin is paradoxically decreased. And this results in decreased insulin sensitivity at the liver and ongoing glucose production by the liver, which contributes to the hyperglycemia. Now, this paradox of increased insulin sensitivity in the periphery and decreased sensitivity at the liver is referred to as brittle diabetes because glucagon secretion from the islet is also impaired in type 3C diabetes. This means that the risk of hypoglycemia is greatly increased in these patients. And one of the biggest differences between type 2 diabetes and type 3C diabetes is the level of pancreatic polypeptide, also called PP. The PP levels are usually increased two or three-fold above normal in type 2 diabetes, but they're usually very low in type 3C diabetes. Can you tell us a bit more about the differential diagnosis of type 3C diabetes? Yeah, this is very much a subject of current research that's being performed by the National Institutes of Health, but our working algorithm is shown here. If a person develops diabetes after a known history of pancreatic disease or documented pancreatic insufficiency, it is almost certainly type 3C diabetes. In addition, it's important to rule out type 1 diabetes which can be shown if there are no anti-islet antibodies to indicate autoimmune disease. To rule out type 2 diabetes, we think that the best test may be to confirm a low level of pancreatic polypeptide after a test meal. And this can take the form of an actual mixed meal or the, the hormone response to a liquid dietary supplement, such as Ensure or Boost. A low PP level makes type 3C diabetes the likely cause. What role um, might dietary intervention play um, as we look at the treatment of type 3C diabetes? Well, because type 3C diabetes is a consequence of diseases of the exocrine pancreas, Virtually all type 3C patients need to be treated with pancreatic enzyme replacement therapy. Even patients who have no symptoms of pancreatic enzyme insufficiency can be shown to have abnormally low fat absorption. So daily enzyme replacement is important to prevent bone disease and vitamin deficiencies. The role of dietary intervention as a therapy is an open question. Because about three-quarters of the patients with type 3C diabetes have chronic pancreatitis as the underlying cause, alcohol is a known causative factor, so abstinence from alcohol is the best advice for all patients. Nutrients with antioxidant properties have been proposed as being possibly therapeutic in this patient group, but no compelling data have appeared to confirm this particular hypothesis. And patients with hyperlipidemia are at increased risk for developing pancreatitis, but it is unclear whether, a di whether dietary fats per se are a risk factor for the disease. Type 3C diabetes due to chronic pancreatitis is a progressive disease. The treatment for type 3C diabetes essentially follows the recommendations for the treatment of type 2 diabetes, except that 
Pinkerton-based agents are strongly discouraged. Metformin is the first-line drug of choice. And the problem with type 3C diabetes accompanying chronic pancreatitis is that this combination of diseases has been shown to dramatically increase the risk of developing pancreatic cancer. Although both diabetes and chronic pancreatitis are separately risk factors for the development of pancreatic cancer, when they occur together, uh, the risk is dramatically increased. Let me show you some some data here from a study that was published in 2012. The problem is that most epidemiologic studies have not differentiated between type 2 diabetes and type 3C diabetes, so it's hard to decipher whether the diabetes that is reported in this or other studies actually preceded the chronic pancreatitis or was caused by the pancreatitis. But in this typical study, it shows that there's a, shows a much increased risk in a large population from England, which was studied. Although chronic pancreatitis and diabetes each increased the risk for pancreatic cancer, the combination of the two increased this risk 12-fold. So the care of patients with type 3C diabetes needs to include surveillance for the development of pancreatic cancer. So what is the prognosis for this type 3C diabetes? Well, for patients with what we call garden variety or type 2 diabetes, the most common form of diabetes, this is usually associated with obesity. And the usual message that we give to patients is to work aggressively to lose weight and maintain as normal a hemoglobin A1C level as possible. And this can result in significant improvements in the risk for diabetic complications in type 2 diabetes patients. Patients with type 3C diabetes, the disease is usually progressive and worsens due to the ongoing progressive pancreatic destruction. So the objective is to avoid anything which would aggravate the pancreatic disease and follow aggressive diabetes management to achieve as normal a hemoglobin A1C level as possible. For older adults with new onset diabetes that may actually represent tumor-induced type 3C diabetes, the message is that if the patient does not fit into the typical phenotype of type 2 diabetes, if the patient is thin, previously active and healthy, no family history of diabetes, then consideration should be given to the possibility of cancer-induced diabetes. And we are working now on trying to validate a diagnostic algorithm in large-scale studies that could be used to identify pancreatic cancer-induced diabetes more readily. Dr. Anderson, thank you so much for being on this podcast. Um, I know that those who are involved in working with patients, particularly um, the members of our academy who do a lot of work with diet, um, will be very interested in um, the um, concepts that you have just covered for us. And um, thank you so much for your time today, and um, we appreciate your being a part of this work that we are trying to do to sort of identify new um, and current issues within the area of diabetes. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. It's been a real pleasure. And uh, we're happy to help in any way. Uh, and if any of your listeners or your members uh, would like more information, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you. Thank you, Linda.